welcome to the First United Methodist Church online worship service. Today's service is performed by Pastor Aaron Ackney. Now here is today's service.
adore him with thanksgiving. And extol him with music and song. The Lord is a great God. The God of love of the cross and the King of kings. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The deep valleys and the high mountains both belong to him. The sea is his. He made it. And, and his hands
12 through 14. If a member of your community, whether a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and works for you six years, in the seventh year you shall set that person free. And when you send a male slave out from you, a free person, you shall not send him out empty-handed. Provide liberally with, out of your flock, your threshing floor, and your wine press, thus giving him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you.
When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, <coughs> frankincense, and myrrh. The reading, may God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. anymore. It's titled, 
Do you hear what I hear? And one of the verses says this. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb? Do you see what I see? A star, a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. The Christmas star. There are those who would want to dismiss that star as a myth. But then again, there are those who want to dismiss the entire Christmas story as a myth. But it's hard to do that, isn't it? I mean, anything that survives thousands of years can't just be dismissed, can it? It takes a shameful arrogance or an obstinate refusal of historic tradition to just dismiss it. We accept that the star was real. Can we precisely explain its presence? No, we can't. But we maintain that it was real. And it appeared in the sky as part of the networking miracle of God's timing in this event. What was that miracle? Well, the world had been waiting. It was part of the reality of when the time was right, God sent his son to be born of a woman. The miracle of when God knew it was time. This morning we're going to key in on verse 2 out of Matthew's second chapter. It says, For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. We have seen and we have come. What did they see? They saw a star in the sky. Well, that's not unusual. I mean, have you looked up into the sky lately at night? <laughs> Last I knew, there's no shortage of stars up there. What was it about this star that drew their attention? Why did it jump out? at them. I mean, when you look up into the sky, does a star jump out at you? Many people have conjectured what this might have been. Was it a supernova? Maybe. Was it a comet? Some think so. Was it a special alignment of stars in the orbiting of the universe? Maybe, in particular, Jupiter and Venus when they come together. Perhaps. Was it a miracle? Could have been. We're not really going to speculate this morning exactly what that was. We're just going to believe that it was. Did the wise men or the magi see it while others did not see it. Well, that gets kind of dicey and iffy, doesn't it? Since the star was in the sky, don't we have to assume that it was visible, not just to the Magi, but to anyone 
looking up into the sky that night, they can see it. Which then draws us to this phrase, this little phrase at the end of verse 2, which says, we have come. We have seen and we have come. That leads us to the million dollar question. Why? What made them come? I mean, it was no small trip. It took them weeks to get there. It wasn't just a, a one or two day trip. I want us to put that on the side for a moment and think about another statement that we hear in our lives a lot. And that's the statement that says, perception is everything. Hmm. Well, we know that if we were to take eight people and stand two of them on each corner of an intersection and watch a parade that passes by, we would get eight different stories about that parade. Wouldn't we? Now it's the same parade, and it's at the same time, and all those people are in the same basic location. And yet there would be eight differing perceptions and perspectives. This type of thing happens all the time in our lives. We know that it's real. And by the way, as another aside, this is exactly why all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are true and valid and worthy of our reading and believing, even though they differ somewhat in their story. Life revolves around perception, doesn't it? So the question becomes, how do we perceive? What do we perceive? Because what we perceive determines how we will respond, does it not? Think about that. Because that concept has great impact on our Christian influence in the world. But that's another sermon. Not today. Let's get back to the Christmas star. We have concluded that the star was plainly visible in the sky and anyone looking up into the sky could perceive it. Meaning that the Magi did not have special classes through which they were looking into the sky, and nor was it somehow mysteriously visible only to those three Magi. No, it was shining brightly in the night sky for all to see. And I'm guessing many people did perceive the light of that star. So let's make this connection now. What affected the way the wise men perceived that star that was different from all the other people who saw that star. Because regardless of how many people saw that star, what does it say? Three people came. We have come, it says. The way those three wise men or magi perceived it affected how they interpreted it. And that determined 
how they responded to seeing it. They came. Pretty significant. Right? So here's a conclusion we have to make. Many people missed that star as a sign. Didn't they? What? So that makes us stop and reflect on our own lives, doesn't it? I wonder how often do you suppose that happens to us? How many times and how many people do you suppose miss signs from God today? How is our perception? How and why do some people see God working and other people do not? Well, there are some variables in our perception, aren't there? Let's just talk about several of them quickly. One of them is the past. We perceive, in part, through memory, don't we? We remember the past. Past experiences make a big difference in perception and perspective. Clearly, they do. It changes our reaction, therefore, dramatically. Memory also allows trial and error learning to be helpful to us. We call that learning the hard way lots of times. But stop to think how traditions get involved here with the past and our memory. I mean, traditions are a memory function, are they not? And they clearly impact our perception. Second variable is knowledge. Knowledge affects our perceptions. Our education, for example, where and how and what we have become educated or knowledgeable about that gives us a point of view, a perspective. Comprehending facts and truths and origins and laws, employing critical thinking skills, these clearly affect what we perceive. And then the last variable we're talking about today is awareness. This introduces our mental processing in the perception process. Every perception is some kind of a sensory experience. And it needs to be processed in order to determine some interpretation of what is being perceived so that we can arrive at an appropriate reaction or response to what we perceive. So the question again is, do we pay attention? Are we paying attention? How aware are we? Now the problem is that both perception and interpretation can be skewed. We know that, right? <coughs> Bias, for example. We can perceive and yet at the same time not truly perceive because of bias. 
At the least, that might confuse us, and in the extreme, that could become dangerous to us. Ignorance is another skew to perception and interpretation. And this notion of having a skewed perception might be a clue for us to understand the story of the Magi and the star. Remember what we said? Some people saw the star and yet they did not really see it for what it was. Now here's some good news. Perception and interpretation can be altered, or they can be enlightened, or they can be corrected, so that when you've seen things incorrectly, you can be helped to see things correctly, which is really important, right? Because if we don't see things correctly, then we cannot make the appropriate response or reaction. That's why healthy people are always going through this process of checking their perception. I say that because I believe that's what gives people hope. It enables people to perceive God working around them, even if at first they miss it. Their perception can be altered or changed or corrected. Church, this, this is the very issue that is at stake in our Christian witness in the world. We have the ability to influence what and how people perceive. In fact, God's depending upon us to do that, isn't he? He's depending on us being able to see the world through faith eyes. Because we're not just talking about physical eyes here. We're talking to be able to see reality clearly, even spiritual reality. So if we are living with the eyes of faith, we will be able to perceive God's hand at play in the situations working around us. And then we can share that with others who do not see it. And that's our role in the world. That's what God wants us to do. Okay, back to the Magi and our question, why did they come and others did not come? The original language names them as Magi. Somehow, we've called them wise men and or kings. Specifically, they were magi. And we deduce from the text that they are from the Persian court, coming from the east. And we would remember, thumbing back into the Old Testament, years and years and years earlier, about the prophet and the priest Daniel, who was the chief magi in the court of the king in Persia. 
And why was he the chief magi? Because his eyes of faith allowed him to perceive God and change what everyone else understood. We might recall how Daniel had a great influence on the nation and among the Magi and among us, brothers and sisters, because we still read his words in the Old Testament book of prophecy. I mean, his influence is long lasting. He had prophesied the future king of kings. And these three magi knew about those words. And they perceived the star through that prophecy. And they came. They were seeing the star with eyes of faith. And with that perception, they simply could not help themselves. We have seen and we have come. And in so doing, they have revealed the king, the epiphany to the world. Well, here's our gospel challenge this morning. Dare we check our own perceptions? I mean, are we assessing reality through the eyes of faith? Are we following the words of prophecy and truth? Church, we've been blessed, we've been gifted with a powerful tradition that is full of prophets and priests, the founding fathers of our faith. They have established for us a history of faithful perception. And we exist now within that great heritage of faith. We need to perceive and interpret what is going on around us accordingly so that we can really see what is going on. So that we can discern God's hand and movement and working among us. Are we seeing that clearly? Do you see what I see? Because the most tragic thing in our lives is to miss it. For our personal well-being, we need to perceive rightly. God needs us to perceive rightly. Perceiving correctly is a huge part of us being able to be healed and then for us to be able to share healing in the world. We need to be able to look at the same thing that other people are looking at but to see what they do not see. And so we can interpret things differently than they interpret them. And that allows us 
to both hold on to a hope that they do not see and then to share a hope that they do not see. For the world's well-being, we need to see and share and we need to speak up. To share means we need to speak up. I firmly believe this right now, in our point in world history, this is our time to shine as a church. The world needs to be enlightened to God's will and way, which they do not see. And we do see. And so we need to speak up and to lead in a faithful response to God's working. That will change the world. When we reveal the King of Kings, then people are able to change who they worship. When we reveal the King of Kings, they have a new place to look for help. When we reveal the King of Kings, they have a new standard with which to conduct their lives. And the world will be changed. May that be our epiphany today. Seeing that truth, so that we might reveal that truth about the babe of Bethlehem to the whole world. God is with us, working among us now and even to the end of the age. Do you see what I see? Lord God Almighty. This morning we turn to you and we beg you to help us see with the eyes of faith. To see the things that can only be seen with the eyes of faith. But in seeing those things, we might have a hope and provide a help that the world needs so desperately. And so, Father, we, we commit right now, each one of us in our own hearts and minds, we commit to seeing things more clearly the things that are eternal, the things that are spiritual, the things that really matter. We dedicate ourselves anew, starting this year, that as we know you more and more, we would see things more clearly. love you more dearly and we would follow you more nearly. Thank you for your presence among us. We ask for you to send your Holy Spirit even now because of this prayer Send your Holy Spirit into the lives 
of those that we can name in our hearts right now. Through the power and the majesty and the mystery of your omniscience and your omnipotence, bring to and speak to each of those people in just the right ways in their lives. And we thank you. That they might be comforted or instructed or that they might see clearly we love you and we want the world to be able to achieve the life with which you created it. And so we give you permission to use us to make that happen. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you until we meet again.